in my talk, I'm going to talk about interoperability between LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. But uh, the tools I will, I'm going to present are uh, more or less independent and can be used by nearly any other Office uh, application which has command line interface. Uh, why do I am at all interested in this thing? <clears throat> I'm a member of a Slovak uh, non-for-profit non organization. With, there is the name Society for Open Information Technologies. And we try to talk to uh, state institutions and to somehow to tell them that there is something so exotic as uh, open source software and they perhaps may start to, thinking about, to, to think about using it. And then they quite often tell us, but you know, it is so bad because it corrupts our um, uh, Microsoft documents. It's ob obviously just an excuse. They, there, is, there are completely different reasons why do they use Microsoft stuff. So uh, thus I started my activity in this area. Uh, I started some, already some time ago. For the first time, I presented this topic at Plugfest in Berlin. Uh, <clears throat> that time, I did something very primitive. I just overlaid two, two documents. Uh, differences are in color. The common stuff is in black. So <clears throat> uh, this works for documents which are nearly identical. Otherwise, we get uh, nonsense. Uh, results were... I computed uh, some uh, measure and presented it as a, a, a writer document. Uh, then later in, in Milano, I presented something uh, different. I extended that by different uh, kinds of measures and different views and uh, tried to somehow evaluate the documents. In both cases, what I did, I to, to, I've chosen a set of applications and did the tests each with each. So if I selected five, uh, five uh, applications, then I had 25 tests times a certain number of uh, documents, so it, the number of tests grew quite rapidly. In... Uh, <clears throat> In Milan, there was a talk by Adam Fine, that time from Cloudon, who talked about round-trip tests where we check a certain set of, of application in comparison to one reference application. And I, it, I have a feeling that this is uh, more suitable because in certain cases we can choose such a reference application. I, in that case, this case, I, I've chosen chosen Microsoft Office, and we can then compare set of other applications <coughs> uh, with that. Oh, sorry. I... So, what will this talk be about? It will be about automated difference grading of, of documents, uh, visual, uh, so based on rendering into PDF. Then on, it will be about visual inspection of such differences. Then on the round trip and uh, print tests, then about document relevance. I will show some results, and then at the end I will show how we can automatically by bisect interoper interoperability errors based on these measures. <clears throat> so, uh, differences. Uh, we take uh, two document. We, we, we take a document. We render it in one application into PDF, in an another application into PDF, and compare these results as bitmaps. Uh, <clears throat> we have four measures. Two of them are computed per page. It's a number of lines of text. Uh, sometimes it happens that the line of text is missing. I have not observed it recently, but a few years ago I had uh, some uh, doc documents which were not completely shown in, in LibreOffice. So this is one error measure. It's graded with two grades. Zero is perfect and five is bad. Then <clears throat> there is text height error. Sometimes interline dif dif differences are... Inter interline spacing is sometimes different in different uh, programs. 
And this uh, number in, mil in millimeters shows how good or bad it, it, that is. Uh, <clears throat> there may be also other reasons. For example, there is an object it, which is placed somewhere where it should not be, and it then uh, changes the uh, height of a, of, uh, of a page. <clears throat> then what I do, I segment uh, the, the page into lines, text lines or any kind of lines according to spacing, and then compute two measures according uh, to, uh, for, for those lines, line uh, pairs. One is uh, vertical position. I simply align them and check if they are on the same place or if they are shifted. And uh, the second error measure is once I have uh, them aligned, I uh, compute uh, differences between details. I will show it uh, in, in a while, the, the details. These <clears throat> measures are in millimeters, but somehow we cannot compare uh, millimeters in one error measure to millimeters in other error measure. Therefore, I grade this uh, by a certain scale, which, was, which is more or less arbitrary, arbitrary according to really personal feeling, which is perfect and which is bad. Uh, the, the, we have eight degrees. Zero is bit identical, so it's absolutely perfect. <clears throat> One is perfect, but not absolutely, but it, the difference is not visible. Uh, then five is really bad. And sometimes it happens that uh, the render document is empty, so it is graded by, by six. And sometimes it happens that the document cannot be opened, so it's graded by seven. And once I run my scripts, I get numbers, then I uh, uh, generate a report. It's called Calc Spreadsheets with all these uh, uh, measures and links and everything. So uh, most of these error measures are quite uh, simple and intuitive, but this one maybe not. It's called feature distance error, and it's about this case. So we have here a, 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 a detail. Is there? Okay, it, it is there. So, uh, uh, balleted list rendered into applications. The, the true one is this bullet. The correct one is this two bullet. And in some application, instead, is rendered this other bullet. So how do we uh, find this difference automatically? The idea is quite simple. <clears throat> uh, this is an image. It has uh, black foreground, white background. I fill the background with distances to the features. So he, here you can see a distance field. It's simply value which grows with distance from, from, from the foreground. Yes? See, here it is bigger. Here it is also larger. Here it is larger. This is the other one. Then I subtract them. And there where the detail is, there is difference. And it uh, can be visually uh, verified that uh, maximum of this, uh, this difference is related somehow not loosely to the size of the difference. So this way we can grade tiny differences in, in rendering. Uh, even down to level to sub millimeter uh, sub millimeter level. So we have the, our measures. Uh, then we uh, run two kinds of tests. One is uh, print test and one is uh, round trip test. Again, very simple. We have a document in this case docx. It is opened by Microsoft Windows, printed to PDF. Then it is uh, opened by, say, LibreOffice, printed to PDF. Th these two are compared, and a uh, report is generated. Uh, this one, this is the report. And uh, views uh, uh, for visual inspection are generated. They will be introduced in a while. <clears throat> the round trip test, nearly the same. Just here, we open uh, by LibreOffice. We save it to the same format, to DocX, opened by, uh, by Windows, uh, not by uh, Microsoft Office, print, 
and then compare these two, two PDFs. And uh, uh, do, uh, again, we do the same. Uh, these two results, I mean this sprint test and round trip, round trip test are in general different because there is uh, the one thing which is called uh, bag, you know the name. Simply, so there are some features in, the, in those documents which cannot be handled by uh, LibreOffice, but are somehow kept, not, not changed, not, not <coughs> they are uh, kept, and therefore uh, these uh, round trip tests should be better than the rendering, the, the, than the print tests, and, and really it is so. <coughs> grab, grab back is the feature. Do I remember it correctly? Okay. <coughs> so, uh, we had uh, four numeric errors. We have four uh, views. They are not uh, really uh, equ equivalent, but somehow they are related. I generate side-by-side -side view. Very simple, trivial, uh, intuitive one. Then I just overlay them, as before, these uh, cyan red uh, colors. Then... <coughs> After segmentation into lines, I align vertically and overlay aligned uh, uh, lines. And then I align these lines vertically and show the uh, differences in details. So let's see what's, what's here. I will sit, use my glasses in order to see what's on my screen. Yes, it's completely different now. So, uh, an example. I have a set of documents. This one was tested by LibreOffice 4.3, and these uh, numbers were computed. Height error was uh, nearly 5 millimeters, so there were some uh, differences between lines. Feature distance, it means the, de the details was 11 millimeters, so quite, quite a lot. Uh, line position error was similar. So, uh, in my reports, it looks like this. So, this is the first one, zero, the, the same number of lines, these two, two uh, th uh, grades three, and then grade five. They are encoded in color so that it's visually uh, easy to perceive what was there without reading the numbers. So, side-by-side <clears throat> uh, -side view. We see that they are pretty corrupt. So the letters are, have different size, positions are different. Um, so this is a side-by-side -side view. The next one is overlay, as expected, n nothing special. We see, so now it's, it's simple and clear, but maybe in a, in a, for a different uh, document, this will show something which is not visible in the side-by-side -side view. Then we align uh, the vertically, so in this uh, view, uh, these uh, line differences vanish, and we have nicely aligned uh, lines. So we see here that the position of these three is uh, correct, the position of these two is not correct. Clearly we see dif differences in these letters. And then the last view is aligned. So we aligned according to the dominating part of the, of the document. So, uh, uh, correlation of uh, these lines is computed. So here we see, see something new which was not visible before. Here, even within the line, there are some problems with position. Because the word alignment is, is uh, uh, fits, but the, the, the word right is shifted a little bit. So, these are those four views. Uh, just if you are interested, it was LibreOffice 4.3. For LibreOffice 4.4, it was better. So, you see... How to get back. So, this is 4.3. So, you can see here this part is bad. In 4.4, it, it got better. So, there was... Maybe you know somebody maybe cor uh, corrected it. Maybe... Uh, it's clear who, it's clear to somebody who did that. Uh, so, 
these positions were corrected, but the line positions are still the same as before. So, <clears throat> a demo. I want, want to now, now show uh, the one such report. So, what, how uh, do these uh, result, result, results look like? So, I click on the link, open it. So, this is my report. So here we have a few test cases. These were doc documents. This one is for an application. This was AbiWord, OpenOffice 3.3, Apache 4.1, and uh, LibreOffice 5.2. The reference application was uh, Word 2010. So we see here we, what is good, what is bad. So clearly Ab AbiWord uh, performs really worse. Uh, so here there are, for example, this insert image works good for the, the remaining ones. This is linked to the original. Here, right by the uh, number, there is this sign. It's a link to the uh, rendered pair of images. So these are the, the four views, line distance error, text, so it is explained here what, what's there behind. So, for example, we can have a look here. How does it look like? So this is uh, uh, such a view. There it is written here which, which kind of view it is, which, uh, which uh, file. This is source. It means rendered by Microsoft. Uh, this one uh, rendered by uh, LibreOffice 5.2. So we see... We don't see anything bad. Great. Uh, for example, here we have another, another case, chapter number. Let's see what's here. So this is side-by-side -side view. So there are differences, but maybe not visible on first sight. If you look more closely, this position is different. Yeah? So in, uh, in this... Uh, this one, well, we see line, uh, line spacing is perfect. Just these are the, those differences. And maybe we can look on these details. So here, clearly, the only problem is, uh, it is one can see that the only problem is, is space between the number and the text in, in those headings. So, and in this way, we have an overview. Okay, so, uh, sorry, I forgot to say, those in blue are uh, such uh, results which are good in all four measures in order to somehow clearly show which is good and which is, which is not good. So those below two are, where all um, uh, grades below, below two are, where all grades are below two, these are in blue. So we can clearly see things which are really good from those which may be also poor. So this is the a report. Uh, this is such a report. Uh, let's go further. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we may have lots of documents. To test, I, uh, my my batch, uh, batch uh, consists of about 1,600 documents, which were also obtained from Adam Fine. He collected them for for purpose for the purpose of testing, and now we have lots of documents, and uh, we see that uh, really many of them are quite poorly graded, and so it's just a big mess. So it's not bad to introduce some order. And uh, the idea of document relevance is to order the documents according to their complexity. So how do we measure uh, document complexity? Uh, simply, we extract tags, which are in those documents. Uh, then uh, we 
get a larger number of documents. So I took maybe 2,000 documents from the internet uh, and uh, extracted those tags and counted the tags. And uh, then sorted uh, the uh, documents according, uh, <coughs> and, and so I counted the, the, the tags and assigned it a certain numeric uh, value which uh, corresponds to the rank. So if uh, something has rank one, it means that this tag is in each of the, the documents. If there is uh, rank zero, it's nowhere in the documents. And uh, rank 0 0.5 means that this tag is present in 50% of the test tested documents. So once we have these numbers, we can uh, grade relevance of a document as a this relative frequency of least frequently used tag in a file. But usually a file has lots of tags. Uh, there will be s definitely something which is nearly in each document, but it is not important for us. We cannot grade anything according to this. But the least uh, 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 frequent tag shows usually the most complex feature which is, which is there. So therefore we, uh, array, uh, we take this frequency of the least frequently used tag in a file as a measure of importance and then we sort files according to this uh, uh, relevance. So uh, another batch of results. So 1,600 doc documents were tested. Uh, the tests was between Microsoft Office 2010 and uh, different LibreOffice versions. I took uh, uh, versions from the Bye Bye section repositories. I took all those, I think, six or seven repositories. Not all, there are more of them, but this, uh, I took this uh, GDB util daily until 4.2, until 4.3, until the last one uh, repository. Took the oldest and latest uh, version within the repository and used them for, for testing. I performed those two, two round trip tests. So it was quite some work. There were 32,000 comparisons. It took two to three days. So not real time stuff. Uh, <clears throat> here I have a, a, re, a table with the results. If you would like to open it, use LibreOffice 5.2 or more recent. I think there are people who know the reason there was a bug which made opening files with, uh, with hyperlinks very slow. And in these, there are 50,000 links in, in such a document, a lot of. And opening with, uh, say, 5.0 takes several hours, I think. So let's see what does this do. OK, works. I hope. OK, I have 5.0. So this is it. And I have such a uh, document, you see, pretty long. Uh, maybe I should make it smaller in order to fit. Here we have uh, these, these are the tests. This is the rank or this uh, relevance. So the least, can you see anything there? No. <laughs> well, somehow the screen. So rank of this is 0 0.88, uh, so it, is, it has really uh, very frequently used, uh, used tags. These are the tags within the documents. Then here we have the file name. Then there is a measure which says if there is progression or regression. If there is... Uh, Negative number, it means there is progression, so the grade decreased. When, with comparison, the, the grade of the last in, compa in comparison to the, re to the remaining ones. If there is, the number is positive, so there is a regression. Then there is a column which says which is the worst, K, worst, worst, grade, worst grade in the last column. Because the, why the last? Because it is the most recent file. So we can have a look at it, but I am running out of time. 
So what can we see that even here, these are simple documents. Say, for example, I will show this one. I have no idea which one it, that is. So this is this simple document. So there is nothing, just new lines and everything. But even here, we, we see that there are, there are problems. For example, oops, I touched a bad button, incorrect button. For example, let, let's see here. There are problems, there are different, uh, differently wrapped lines. I asked about possibilities on, on the developer's mailing list. I think currently that the reason is that LibreOffice ignores uh, setting of kerning in docx documents completely. Simply, there is this uh, uh, styles.xml files where kerning for the whole document is set and LibreOffice, I think, I'm not quite sure because I am not really uh, good in this, this area, but I think that LibreOffice completely ignores that. So. Maybe it is not a problem for a user, but it is a problem for me because even for documents that are perfect, it uh, gets it results in a very bad grade, and it, it it overshadows other bugs and makes my grading worse worse than it is. So this this is that. So I have oh three minutes. So. <clears throat> Let's go further. So you can download everything and you can try that and if you want uh, to talk to me, uh, uh, I can I explain it clo more closely. So these are results. Uh, for example, in, in round trip test, I see there are 300 reg regressions, 1,000 progressions, oh, nearly 1,000 progressions. In print, the results are really poor. 700 regressions. They may be really tiny. It is not that regression means completely bad something. It, it just may be a tiny little, little bit worse re result. So we can see there are problems with simple documents. This kernel handri handling, uh, incorrect line spacing. There may be this, uh, this uh, evaluation is not perfect. There are a lot of, lots of problems still because somehow the rendered document can be bad in so many ways that these four measures simply are not able to, to um, take into account everything. So the last thing is automated by, by, section, by, by section. If we see in the result that there is some, uh, some uh, that there is a uh, regression, we can by bisect. Simply, we find the document and the by bisection repository in the, in the result. Uh, <clears throat> we run by bisection script, do some magic and submit patch. Simply, yeah. So let's see how does it look like. So again, a demo. It is here. Simply, I have everything prepared. This is, I'm in, the, in a directory of a by bisection repository. I have here extracted latest and oldest uh, version in order to check if there is really a reg regression. Uh, in files, I have uh, something to test. Uh, so it is this file. And then I run a script, uh, just uh, by bisect git something. It is. It will take three minutes, and I don't have time for that. And then I will get a, a progress report. You see here uh, running, it says here that there are 22 revisions, 11 revisions, 5, 2. So just uh, by bisection, it runs automatically because Git supports that. I just wrote a kind of wrapper. And once it is finished, I get here a uh, few uh, few files. It is the last good rendition, last uh, view of the last good uh, display, uh, uh, view of the last bad display, plus some some log. Cut this one. Oh, sorry. This one. Cut log 
Oh, I forgot to look at this direction. So, so there is log. You, you are probably more familiar with this, uh, these logs. So you just get the revision where the bug is. So Miklos was probably not author of the bug, but he's author of the repository, I think. So don't blame him. Don't, don't blame him now. Good. So to, to summarize, we can test any office application with command line. We can test any, any uh, format. So, oh, it, it, it was supposed to be here PPT and PPTX, not doc and docx. Uh, <clears throat> maybe these 1,600 documents should be somehow classified, and we should perhaps, well, maybe if you are interested, I, am, I would be glad if you can use it somehow to, to improve LibreOffice. So, Thank you, That's, that was it. Oh.